Sino ang isasalang natin ngayon sa hot seat? Good evening. Ito po ang hot seat at ako po si Kim Bernardo Lokin. We have here with us one of the new generation of political leaders. She was vice mayor of Quezon City for eight years. She was elected mayor of that city in the last elections. And she is the one and only daughter of the late newspaper publisher, Betty Go Belmonte, and former House Speaker, Feliciano Sunny Belmonte Jr. But, we'll, of course, we'll ask her why she chose to enter politics like her father. And of course, ang guest natin ngayong gabi, sinabi ko na, walang iba, kung hindi si Mayor Joy Belmonte. Good evening, Mayor. Good, good evening, Kim, and good evening to everyone watching our show. Yes, oh, So, Mayor Joy, actually, inaantay ka nga ng mga tao ngayon dito. Eh. You're much awaited because they want to find out also how different or how the same are you from your father. So, probably my first question is, your father um, had a very successful completed term mm -hmm. as mayor and even as uh, congressman. He became speaker. So, now it's your turn. Big shoes to fill. Well, I don't intend to fill issues. That's the first uh, point I'd like to make. Okay. Because I think it's very important to be able to forge an identity for yourself. All your own. Yeah, on my own. And while I, I would like to think that I inherited his good values, mm -hmm. such as his work ethic, because he works very hard, yes. uh, such as his sense of fairness and his sense of justice and um, his uh, his being knowledgeable about his craft, etc. Mm -hmm. um, I'd I think that my invocacies are very different from his. No? And so in the past eight, eight and a half years as vice mayor, mm -hmm. I think I've tried to um, create an identity very different from his. So I'm known for being a human rights advocate, specifically a women's rights advocate. Um, I also promote children's rights and PWD rights, yes. and um, mostly those of the marginalized, no? whereas he's more known for being a very good fiscal manager. Yes, he yeah. is. And uh, we need that also, especially as big as Quezon City. Yes, we do. See? But um, the way I see it is you have your own advocacies and you fight for those. And that's what gives you passion. And that's what makes you get up in the morning to work. Because there are certain things you just want to achieve uh, for certain sectors of society. Mm -hmm. And while fiscal management is very, very important, I cannot say that I'm very good in math. So, so don't what, worry. Yeah. Not all of us have that as a strong suit. So. Yeah. So what I did was I, where my weaknesses are, the gaps, I, that's where I got in good people. No? And, I, and I'm quite happy to say that most of the people that work with me in City Hall are really technocrats. Mm -hmm. They're from the private sector. They are people from our city mm -hmm. who I think have already Siguro earned enough money in the private sector and are willing to give back now to society. And mm -hmm. so I'm very happy to be working with this breed of, of um, I would say, public servants in the sense that now all they want to do is, uh, as stakeholders of the city, help improve the city. Right. You're actually very fortunate, uh, Mayora, because one of the biggest problems uh, of those that are doing very well in the private sector is that it's so hard to convince them to go work for your government, whether it's LGU or whether it's national, because, you know, it's not commensurate, yes. they say, diba? So how are you able to convince them? Well, first, um, these are people who already, I think... Um, fulfill themselves in the private sector I see. and are looking for something else to give them more meaning in life. You know, so uh, working in government, I, I told them, is a different kind of fulfillment. It's not monetary compensation, but yes. the fact that you are in a position to make a great difference in the lives of people is a different kind of fulfillment altogether. That's and, true. and these are people who are like that, who want to find more meaning in their lives. No? Mm -hmm. But second, you're right about the compensation. It's really low compared to the private sector. And that that's why one of my advocacies now is to find ways uh, through which we can probably improve um, compensation for highly skilled uh, people who we would like to recruit to work for government. And I'd yes. like to give you an example. For example, in Quezon City, we're having a hard time um, keeping our doctors, our lawyers, our engineers, yeah. you know. The our, professionals. Yes, huh? the highly trained professionals yeah. because they can earn so much more in the private sector. Oh, and true. now I have a house bill. 
I'm not a congressman, mm -hmm. but I drafted one for my congressman, Congressman uh, Jesus Suntay or Bong Suntay yeah. of the 4th District. I asked him, would you mind filing this? And this is a, um, a house bill which... Um, proposes that if you're a highly urbanized city and you can afford it fiscally, mm -hmm. um, you should be allowed to give higher compensation to professionals so that right. they will want to work for government. No. Well, that's that's good to hear. So um, has uh, the congressman filed it? Already? So I think I've given the draft to Congressman Suntai. Ah, okay. and, so um, you're I expecting pretty I, soon. I am. He was quite excited about it actually okay. because I, I think we all share the same sentiments that right. many people would want to work for government like in Singapore for example, where they have the best and the brightest working for government. But it's just that the realities are there that they have to support their families and they invested a lot on their educations. Come you know, on. and if, if government can compensate that even just a little bit higher, uh, even kahit hindi pantay ng private sector, I think a lot would want to work for government just because yes. there's so much that you can do to change the world, you know, in government. Alamo, that's true, no? And those are really lofty dreams actually of our countrymen also. But um, for you, Mayora, you say you're a, obviously you're a different person from your dad. So, ano ngayon ang mga priorities mo as mayor? Kasi, of course, you have your own set of priorities as mayor. Your dad might have his different legacy that he mm -hmm. gave to Quezon City. So, um, what will you be pushing for that will be different or wasn't seen before? And uh, how would you like to be known for? Well, I guess you have to remember that there were nine years between my dad and myself. Mm -hmm. And so, contexts are always different. And the right. needs of the people are always different. Also, and, the times are and different. And the times then. are different. So, in the time of my dad, the problems of Quezon City were very different. For example, our city was in heavily in debt. You know, we were heavily in the red. So really, a fiscal manager was what the city needed. And At that's the what time, they yes. got yeah. when they elected my father. And mm -hmm. he really did a good job um, by uh, bringing back the city to fiscal health. And in fact, when he left public office in 2010, he left a surplus that, that was a comfortable surplus for the next mayor. No? Mm -hmm. And um, me naman... I, I inherited a, a, a context in which there are so many social problems, yes. you know, like um, there are issues that were not there before. Issues like, um, like? mental health is a big issue. Oh, yeah. HIV, we are number one. In fact, in the whole country, the is number it of, City? Yes, it is Quezon yes. City because wow. uh, the Philippines is number one in the Asia Pacific region, yes. and Quezon City is the biggest city in the Philippines. So therefore, we are probably the most in terms of the number of HIV positives. Right. There are issues like education is getting poorer, readability. Mm -hmm. If you notice, fifty percent, I think, of our graduates that don't even know how to read. That's what I was told. No, yes, healthcare is a big problem. Oh, those are really alarming problems. Yeah, wow. and and you know that we have about 215,000 families in Quezon City that don't have homes. Oh so, I would like to focus on the basic human rights, mm -hmm. you know, which is healthcare, education, shelter, and, um, and the safety. Mm -hmm. no, and these are things that are close to my heart. And of course, I would also like to focus on the different problems per sector. Like, for example, now you know that women are just not women. They are solo parents. They are teenage mothers. Yes. They are, you know, and so you have to be, be able to break down categories in society so that you can better serve them because you will know that their needs are always different. Mm -hmm. Even if you're a woman, the, uh, the, the needs of an elderly woman will be different from the needs of a teenage girl. Yes. And so... Um, for me, I would like to approach governance from the perspective of knowing the data, mm -hmm. numbers are so important yes. in governance, and then knowing the exact issues that are affecting each sector so that you can actually allocate funds wisely and mm -hmm. avoid wastage, and then you can really um, provide the services needed by each sector towards inclusive growth. And I would like to stress that my uh, mandate compared to probably the previous mayor is inclusive growth, that everybody must uh, feel the benefits of living in Quezon City. Okay, so you're coming in at the time also where uh, a few other um, mayors in Metro Manila are also shining and young, you know, so they bring with them dynamism, idealism, and new hope perhaps, no? So, syempre, marami nagkukumpara sa inyo. For example, the Manila mayor, oh, so the Pasig mayor, hindi ba? So, you belong to that breed. Pero sabi nila, mayora, eh, kailangan daw maghabol pa ng Quezon City. 
Well, in the sense that Quezon City is so much bigger, people keep forgetting that one-fourth of Metro Manila is really Quezon City. That's right. 25% of the population of Metro Manila is Quezon City. Mm -hmm. And the problems of Quezon City are sixfold. I mean, because the size of Quezon City compared to, let's say, Manila or Makati uh, or Pasig is mm -hmm. maybe five to six times. Right. Yeah. And the second biggest city in Metro Manila is Caloocan, and we are three times bigger than Caloocan. No? Wow. So I don't mind that they say kailangan maghabol ang Quezon City. Mm -hmm. Siguro totoo naman because um, talaga naman ang laki laki ng, ng problema compared to others. Like if right. you're building a road in Makati, you're building six times more roads in Quezon City. That's true. Um, if you're housing X amount of people in Valenzuela, you're housing six times more families in Quezon City, you know, and, and the resources in Quezon City are not all that much greater than the other cities. In fact, we're almost the same as Makati, but with six times more people. That, that's true. Yeah. So, so, you know, given all of these problems yes. na in your, at your desk right now, how do you now prioritize? Yeah, so in my case, first, I would like to say that kami mga mayor, we don't feel that we are in competition with one another. Okay. Um, it's just the media that want to make us compete with one Hindi, another. Yes, siguro yung mga iba din, for example, may mga nakatira ng Quezon City, magtatrabaho, let's say, ng Makati. So, syempre, nakikita nila, hindi ba? Ay, oh, so, yung mga tao, parang oh. kasi hindi nila naiintindihan yung, um, dynamics. yung dynamics. Yes. O hindi nila naiintindihan yung situation. Like, mm -hmm. for example, uh, yung one example is yung mga nagtatrabaho uh, or yung mga seniors na lang uh -huh. sa, sa Quezon City. Lagi nila akong tinatanong, bakit wala kaming cake eh, sa, Mac <laughs> sa Makati may cake? No? And that's my favorite example because then I have to say, kasi sa Makati they have maybe, I don't really know the exact number, but let's say they have 35,000 seniors. Mm -hmm. We have six times more seniors, so therefore, would you rather have cake or would you rather have medicine? Because uh, um, it's now a matter of prioritization. No? So, that, that's right. um, prioritization will be a little harder in a city like Quezon City where resources are fine night and the needs of the people are so much greater than the resources that we have. Tama. Mm. And then also, Mayora, one other big question is obviously yung anti-drugs and then yung anti-drug campaign and then um, how your city compares with the rest, di ba? And this being the priority also of our president, di ba? Pero bago masagutin yan, tanong na yan, magbabalik po ang hot seat, dyan lamang po kayo. Hi everyone, I am Zihir Basho and welcome to the new Clark City where the 30th Southeast Asian Games will be held this November. Dito gaganapin ang tagisa ng mga atleta mula sa iba't ibang bansa ng Southeast Asian region. Good evening and welcome back to Hot Seat. And tonight, our guest is Quezon City Vice Mayor Joy Belmonte. Kanina, Mayora Joy, we uh, left a question hanging. And this is on the question of illegal drugs and illegal mm -hmm. drug campaign. Alam mo kasi na, of course, very controversial ang campaign na yan nationwide. Mm -hmm. Hindi ba? And uh, in Quezon City, sabi mo, ang dami-daming tao, napakalaki ng lugar ng Quezon City. So how are you dealing with this and how are you faring compared to the others? Well, I don't know why it was considered controversial in the first place. I think masyadong nag-dwell mm -hmm. ang media doon sa sinasabing EJK or human rights yung violations. At saka yung tokhang na... Pero actually, lagi kong pinapaliwanag kasi maraming foreign media na nagpupunta sa Quezon City nagugulat kasi yung ini-expect nilang violence, yung ini-expect nilang human rights violations, it's hindi nila really nakikita there. sa Quezon oh. City. Oh, oh. And it's because, really, yung, yung tritang tokhang is a bastardized uh, word, uh -oh. and the real meaning of tokhang is katok at 
surrender. Parang ganon. Uh-huh. You knock uh-huh. and you ask people Actually, to surrender. Actually, it's just a term that they yeah. use. It's an oplan to kang. Parang ganon, diba? yeah. And then parang naging they associated. They equate it to EJK. They, diba? Yes, naging associated siya sa EJK at human rights violations. Pero in reality, it's about knocking and asking those who are known users mm-hmm. um, to surrender voluntarily for rehabilitation. So for Quezon City, and that, kasi sabi nila, ay, katulad niyan, Mayora, you employ a lot of former NGOs, you work with them, di ba? Eh, ito yung mga critical sa government policy na, or the government operations on Tokang, on illegal drugs. So, um, how do you now marry the situation where, di ba, critical sila kahit anong gawin ng mga kapulisan or ng, ano, on anti-illegal drugs? Alam na sa amin, wala kaming naging problema. I don't, Talaga? Yes, Quezon City had no problem because first, my, my QCPD at that time mm-hmm. uh, was um, General Eliazar. Of course, he's quite famous now. Of course. Um, he's now in the national PNP, mm-hmm. right? Yes. But he was a very um, amiable, likable, well-loved police officer who went down to the communities and really won back the trust of the people sa mm-hmm. police. No? Mm-hmm. And that's one of, I think, the greatest accomplishments of General Eliazar. And mm-hmm. I worked very closely with him. And from the start, kaya, kaya vibes kami, mm-hmm. is we agreed already that Tokang in Quezon City will be a humane, humanitarian, human rights-based um, f- program. Sumasama ka ba, Mayora? Yes. Nakikita mo ba yung kanilang operations? Well, sumasama ako sa kanila kapag kumakatok sila at nagpapasurrender. That's, that's good. And yes. kasi, syempre, iba naman yung work nila sa work namin. Tama. Yung work nila is law enforcement. Sa amin, sa local government, it's really prevention, treatment, and rehabilitation. Yes. And in terms of prevention, I have a massive pool of young people. They're called Barkada Contra Droga. Mm-hmm. And they're there to help me um, to, to advocate for n- not the use of drugs, but adopt, to adopt other things that make you happy, but not drugs. Parang ganyan. Mm-hmm. No? And, and they're there. They're helping me sa grassroots. Tapos sa, prevent, sa treatment, I have a tahanan. I have a rehab center already for women, men, and LGBTs and minors. It's and very progressive. Talaga? Yeah. I was gonna ask, how, how is it doing right now? It's doing very well. And in fact, ito nga yung nakakagulat. You would have thought that baka punong-puno na yung tahanan namin. It has 300 beds, I think, at the yeah. moment. But may mga bakante pa. Which even means? If, even if I have 6,000 surrenderers, which huh? means that the majority of those who surrendered and wanting to change their lives uh-huh. do not need to be institutionalized. Mm-hmm. No? They can be treated sa community-based rehabilitation. And right. so that's something that I'm very proud of because Quezon City was the first city, I believe, ha, in the Philippines that was able to craft a community-based rehabilitation program for surrenderers that are not quite um, an institutional level. Mm-hmm. Yung siguro sumubok lang, leisure uh-huh. leave lang ang paggamit. Uh-huh. Um, at pwede silang matreat sa community by going through clinical um, tre- sessions. No, mm-hmm. I think 12, if I'm not mistaken. But they can still go to work. They can still go about their regular um, mm-hmm. chores. And then they just have to finish these 12 sessions. Tapos may three sessions with the church mm-hmm. and two additional sessions with the family. Um, and after that, we find them work. Na pag nag-test sila consistently na negative, 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 na ibig sabihin, the treatment is working. And then we find them work. So it starts with surrendering and it ends with a job. And jobs so are very important. So at least important. na-encourage sila, yeah. Mayora. Yeah. No? Oo, at saka jobs are important because kaya sila gumamit kasi walang meaning sa buhay nila. Tama. But if meron na silang pinagkakaabalahal ang trabaho na may uuwi na nalang sweldo kay misis sa mga anak, ganyan, oh. alam mo magkakaroon sila ng saysay sa buhay nila, hindi na sila gagamit ng droga. Tama. And, and that was always our approach. No? Kaya uh, when the foreign media came and they would see a ah, program pala sa Quezon City that is very humane, very compassionate, mm-hmm. um, no sign of violence whatsoever. Mm-hmm. Um, they had a different view of this so-called war on drugs. Oh, so, naliwanagan sila sa madaling salita. <laughs> Tingin ko. And I, in fairness, wala namang sinabi si Pangulong Duterte na kailangan ganito ang war on drugs. I think he left. He was a mayor. Yes. That's why I love him. He's a mayor. Oh. So, mayors like to do things in their own way. Right. Ayaw nilang pinap pakialaman sila. Diba? So, autonomous nga. Diba? Autonomous nga eh. So, I think ang ginawa ni PRD is simply na, mga mayor, ito yung directive, basta address illegal drugs. Mm-hmm. But, you know, if in you In the have, way that you can. In the way that you can, uh-huh. and the way that you're comfortable with, just yes. give me results. Okay. And, you know, I just want to say, Kim, hindi na sa nagpa- nagyayabang ako, but magyayabang na nga ako. <laughs> Kasi we got um, the DOH Award for Most Outstanding um, Anti-Drug Abuse Council, and we got the DILG oh. Award 
award for most outstanding anti-drugamus wow, cancer. Wow, congratulations. So I think you did very well. Yeah, yeah you, did, you did very well kasi syempre hindi naman lahat nabibigyan ng ganyang award, di ba? Oo. Oh, Based on accomplishments yan. So ito, next question. Okay. Traffic. Okay. And uh, how do you deal with it? And then earlier, meron tayong pinag-uusapan kanina, yung directive ng Pangulo rin na tanggalin yung mga illegally parked na cars, di ba? Ang question ko dyan, mm -hmm. hindi ba mayora kanina, paano kung yung residente o oh, nagsimula siya sa maliit, lumaki ng konti yung gumanda yung kabuhayan, naayos niya yung bahay niya, nakabili siya ng kotse, pero wala naman siyang garahe, walang provision. How do you solve that problem? Well, first we have to be clear about what the directive of the president is. Many people think that it's all streets, but actually it isn't. Yung directive lang naman ng Pangulo and ng DILG is yung mga mabuhay lanes, mm -hmm. and these are the roads that connect one city to another. So, mm -hmm. kailangan clear yan. Vital roads. Vital roads. Mm -hmm. So, 24-7, clear yan. Sidewalks plus street. Ganun din sa mga national roads. Mm -hmm. Okay? Clear yan 24-7, sidewalk and street. Tapos, secondary national road, ganun din. Pero we have what we call city streets, uh -huh. and then we have barangay streets. Mm -hmm. no? So, kung yung, 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 ano, yung bahay mo nasa mabuhay lane, o kaya sa national, or sa secondary, at may mm -hmm. sasakyan ka, e di magpark ka sa, sa loob, maglakad ka na lang papunta sa bahay mo. Oh, oh. Pwede naman yon. Pwede yun. Oh, oh. Ah, hindi ka lang talaga mag pwede magpark dito sa mga pinagbabawal na kalsada because we're gonna be very strict to enforce that. That's right, but you said meron kang approach eh, may solution ka eh, on how to permanently deal with that long-term solution yes. para sa mga wala talagang garahe. Yeah, so eventually, ako naman, um, ayoko naman itong parang band-aid solution. Correct. And eventually, you do want your streets to be, whether city or barangay, to be clear. Absolutely. Diba? Especially during these times of, of traffic. Diba? Kaya, ngayon, what we're doing is, we're in the, pres in, the, in the present moment, we are um, engaging in negotiations with private landowners na idle naman ang lupa, mm -hmm. na baka naman gusto nila mag-enter into a joint venture with the city government towards building multi-level parking slots or parking spaces, mm -hmm. wherein pwede namin paghati a new profit. You've, you've started already so with that? So, we have identified several properties already. Wow, okay. um, it's just that I inherited the, the budget of the previous mayor na medyo na kulang. So, <laughs> <laughs> I did. I wasn't able to start with any infra projects this year. So mm -hmm. housekeeping na lang ako. But by 2020, definitely, pwede na tayo magsimula ng ganito mga programs. So next year, oh. yes. Yeah, so, oh. Yun nga eh. Actually, meron tayong mga ibang mga taga Quezon City din. Ayun nga yung tinatanong nila. Bakit daw wala silang nakikita na mga new projects, infrastructure or otherwise, hindi ba? Eh, but you said kulang yung budget na iniwan sa yun non di ba? But this is the same mayor that actually egged you to run for mayor. Yes, yeah, so that's oh. why there are no permanent friends in politics. So right? paano <laughs> ngayon yan, Mayora? And, I mean, what will you do um, to those that are asking for, bakit walang masyadong aksyon nakikita kami sa Quezon City? Well, if they're oh. looking towards infrastructure, wala talaga because mm. nasimot yung infrastructure budget. Ng, that's the truth. Ng, that's, that's the truth. And I can very, I can tell that to you in, in national television. Mm -hmm. There were not not much infrastructure budget or if none at all no but but um in terms of other things that are i think are important to the people for example dati pag nasunugan ka maghihintay ka ng anim na buwan bago ka bibigyan ng assistance ng city government naayos ko yon so ngayon 3 days meron ka ng tulong okay ganun din um sa iba pang mga uh, services mabilis na ngayon exactly frontline yeah. services frontline services uh -oh. mabilis na and that's not infrastructure that's mm -hmm. systems that's mm -hmm. processes so ang sinabi ko sa mga tao ko, wala tayong pang paggawa ng kahit ano, dahil wala. Pero maramit pa tayong pwedeng gawin para improve ang service delivery sa mga tao. No? So one thing I did also, okay, magta-taxpayer season ngayong January. Eh alam naman natin, notorious ang pila sa Quezon City Hall. That's right. It snakes all over until it, the next town, you know, ganyang oh, kaamba. Oh, yes. Well, I entered into agreements with six malls. Mm -hmm. At nagtayo ako ng, nagtayo kami together, partnership ng business center sa mga mall na ito. Ano yun? Parang one-stop shop? Parang gano'n na nga. Well, mm -hmm. some are one-stop shop kasi mas malaki yung space na binigay. Ah, depending on the depending space. Depending sa uh -huh. space. Pero ang definitely all the malls, pwede na tayong magbayad ng amilyar mm -hmm. o kaya mag-apply ng mga business permits doon sa mga malls na yan para hindi na tayo pipila sa City Hall. Mm -hmm. no? uh -huh. um, so yan, I think that's a difference. That's a change. Inayos yun natin yung sistema para hindi na pabalik-balik yung tao. Pagpunta niya, isang beses lang, sisendisyo na siya mabilis 
this. No, so mm -hmm. um, systems improvement is just as important as infrastructure. Tingin I, ko. I, I, I totally, I totally yeah. agree with that. And then, Mayora, ang sabi nung iba, parang hindi ka daw yung traditional politician actually. Even though you've become a vice mayor and all, parang akala nila that, uh, you know, like your uh, siblings, you would be in the private sector. But of course... Before you answer that question on what your alternative life <laughs> would have been, we will uh, have to go to a break. So the hot seat will be right back. Please stay with us. Mga isyung pinag-uusapan. Mga palitang laman ng pahayagan. Informasyong dapat yung malaman. Tatalakayin. Pupusisiin. At hihimayin ni Mario Garcia. Kasama ang kanyang mga panauhin sa harap ng bayan. Face off! Welcome back to the hot seat. And our guest, Quezon City Mayor Joy Belmonte. So, uh, Mayor Joy, sabi ko nga, ang tingin ng iba sa'yo, hindi ka naman yung parang traditional politician na alam nila. Ang tingin nila, akala nila, you would be actually uh, following the footsteps of your, like, let's say your two brothers who are in the private sector who's running a, a print business, and ba? Publishing. So, like your late mom, di ba? Pero napunta ka sa, sa public service at uh, sa pagsiservisyo, and then you follow the footsteps of your dad. Is this something that you had always wanted to do or no? Well, actually, I... To be honest, I am an archaeologist. Ayun nga. I studied archaeology in school. Yeah. And I did practice as an archaeologist. Really? I taught at the University of the Philippines. Okay. Um, and that was really my career uh, of choice. No? Why? Why? It's you just, were interested. I, yeah, that's really my passion. I love history and I love, you know, I love everything that happened in the past. I find it so fascinating. And the thing is, I realized, there's a, also naman a nationalistic perspective here. I realized that countries mm -hmm. and people who are very aware of their history and their past, yes. they love their country more. That's right. And I noticed the reason why Filipinos medyo mababaw yung, yung pagmamahal minsan sa bayan. Yeah. Um, is because hindi nila naunawaan anong pinagdaanan ng kanilang mga ninuno um, from time immemorial para maabot itong kalagayan ngayon. And, and is, is that right? I, kaya pala, yeah, that's how I kaya feel. Kaya yeah. before, totoo ba yun? Sabi nila as vice mayor ba yun? Or mayor na hindi ko alam ano, kung, um, kung vice mayor ka pa. You uh, helped daw uh, put up this museum? Yes, that was my initiative because uh -huh. you know, Quezon City is a melting pot. Everybody mm -hmm. doesn't most people don't come from Quezon City because Quezon City was not there before. Right. It was created by President Quezon from various other local governments. And it became the capital and at it, one time yes. of the Philippines. But yeah. remember, he carved out various parts like Rizal or San Juan or Marikina. He put them together and formed a new city mm -hmm. as late as 1939. Mm -hmm. no, so it's a new city. It's only 80 years old. No, So That's the right. people don't come from Quezon City. Yes. So when you talk to people, San Kilgaling, they'll not say Quezon City. The young ones siguro will say Quezon City. But the older ones will say, Taga Bicol kami. Uh -oh. Or Taga Nueva Isia, Taga uh, Ilocos. Mm -hmm. They don't identify with Quezon City. Now, what I wanted to do, what I wanted to do was to um, create a generation, form a generation of of young people who, who, who identify with Quezon City, mm -hmm. who say their roots are Quezon City. That's right. At talagang taga Quezon City. So mm -hmm. that museum is a local history museum. So you and you hopefully um, will uh, will say that maybe the next generations will be able to identify more. Yes, and it has the history of Quezon City from the start. Mm -hmm. And uh, we mandate our school children to go to this museum and learn mm -hmm. about the history of the city so that at least um, they will identify, they will love and then when you love kasi your city you know what you don't mind being a volunteer for the city you don't mind being a yes. stakeholder of the city you don't mind giving a little bit more back to the city because you love it and you identify with it and that's my perspective and that's Segura, why mm -hmm. I love this city so much because I was born here and my dad always puts it in my head ako ang Dueva Isi ha pero ikaw Quezon City ha yeah. dahil dito ka na talaga uh -oh, pinanganak dito, dito ka lahat. lumaki uh -oh. Uh -oh. Tama. Yeah. that's true no okay so um, let's go to to um, the, another side, governance, because you're now in, in politics, di ba? So, obviously, your style is different from your dad. Mm. Eh, karamihan ng mga nandiyan sa Quezon City, sanay sa style ng dad mo, di ba? And you're very different. So, um, how do you deal um, with um, those types of comments 
some say criticisms uh, on the style of governance. I think we're not really all that different. Eh. Mm -hmm. It's just that. Um, eh, sabi nila hindi ka daw kasing approachable ng dad mo. Uh, that's actually not true. I'm Ganun more ba? approachable than my dad. Really? Yeah, it's mm -hmm. just that there are more people now. You have to understand, when my dad was mayor, ilan lang yung tao sa Quezon City? Oh, too. ilan lang population na... When he left, I just, I have to um, stress this, ha? When he left um, Quezon City as mayor, there were 2.7 million people <laughs> in Quezon City. Now, now there are 3.2. Oh my gosh, so, almost double. Eh, dumami talaga. No. No. And so, obviously, there's so, the days hindi naman humaba. Hindi naman dumami yung katawan ko. Tama. So, if they wanna see me, maybe they have to wait a little longer lang kasi dumami lang talaga yung tao. Uh -oh. At dumami na yung suliranin, di ba? Uh -huh. But it's not that I'm hard to... In fact, I work 12 to 14 hours a day just talking to people, uh -huh. di ba? So, it's not that I'm hard to reach. It's just that it's harder... In the in general, because there's just so many more people Tama. that I have to talk oh, to. Oh, you mm -hmm. know, maybe that's a good that's a good point because mm -hmm. um, not everybody would um, think of that as a, one of the major reasons, right? Dini lena realize siguro mayora na that at that time iba pa yung number ng tao na oh, nakapila, oh. iba yung chaka yung degree ng mga problems were different then and now, correct? It, they're very different mm. now. So I don't think that it's a matter of me being very different. I think the times are a little bit different. And okay. so we have to adjust lang to the times. So more challenging? I think it's very, it's much more challenging. In fact, when I talk to my dad, he's so surprised that I, I mentioned problems that he never heard of. Mm -hmm. Or he, he didn't know was such a problem in that time, in his, in his time, you know. Right. And, um, and, you know, and it's, 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 uh, it's not that we're very different, but um, I, I inherited a lot of his traits, I believe his values, but again, the priorities are just, just different. So, and much larger now, the larger. problems. Oh, uh, oh. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, so moving forward, mm -hmm. uh, Mayor. So you're now, um, what, you have two more years uh, for your first term, yes, right? Two and a half. So um, two and a half. Sige na nga, isama natin kalahate, <laughs> di ba? Kahit bago mag-campaign. So um, what can people expect from you? What can uh, the people from Quezon City expect from you? Well, I think they can expect quite a lot in 2020. Um, first, I'd like to stress that the budget of the city has gone up from 21 billion roughly mm -hmm. in 2019 naging 27 billion wow that's no? a huge jump. and it's about almost a 30 percent increase yes. no? and I, i'd like to credit that to good housekeeping really i didn't mm -hmm. increase taxes nothing um it was just good housekeeping good collections you know being quite strict they say i'm strict yeah i think that's one of the differences they say so. napaka strict to ni mayora mm -hmm. you know but at the end of the day i always say di ba gusto niya ng pagbabago mm -hmm. oh i'm giving you change it's different yes. I'm a different kind of mayor. I'm not a traditional politician, but you asked for one, and now you've got it. And um, um, I'll, I'm strict, but look, the budget is bigger, and all of that will go to you. And it will go to them in the form of social services. So already, I have already increased the assistance given for medical assistance. Now, yes. I've, I'm increasing the assistance given to, to burials now, mm -hmm. from 10000 Magiging 25,000. I'm going to cover the entire burial wow. service already. I'm increasing the number of scholars by 4,000. You know, So I'm going to have programs for solo parents. I'm going to have programs on mental health. I'm going to have programs for teenage mothers. I have, I'm going to have programs for all the sectors. Na dati wala naman silang uh, um, uh, tailor fit programs. Mm -hmm. um, and they will feel that in the, in the area of social services. Mm -hmm. I will also focus on good governance. Because I always think that good governance is the key to good service delivery. Absolutely. It's a means to an end. The end is service as delivery, mm -hmm. but the means is maayos ang pangangasiwa mo ng pondo ng bayan. So how do you deal with corruption then? Because, you know, part of good governance means that uh, you have to cut the old ways. Yes. Um, and that's hard, huh? I mean, not just you, I suppose, but nationwide. You know, I'm sure all the other LGUs are experiencing the same thing, diba? Same challenges. So how do you deal with it? Well, me, I'm really, I, 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 hate, I am adverse to corruption. I hate corruption. I always think that corruption is the, the cause of many of our absolutely. Our, our problems in the city, you know? Um, the reason why there is a lack of medicines, bad health care um, yes. in some areas, mm -hmm. poor education, etc. Uh, because substandard of infrastructure it's all it's all corruption yes. you know and it's all greed so no yeah, corruption absolutely. equals greed i mean for me and i for and me the opportunity kasi, the others kasi, they see an opportunity they grab it they, uh, precisely oh. and now one, one of the things i'm trying to do well first is to lead by example Good. you know okay this is how i do things Ako, i'm so transparent okay mm -hmm. um my office is 
is open. I, you know, it was closed when I inherited it. I put glass, I made it open. Mm -hmm. you, so everyone can see what I'm doing. And you can see that I'm at work. You can see who I'm talking to. I mean, I want it to be transparent. And all the paperwork, you can all see it. It's transparent, everything. The bidding process, it's live. You can watch it, you know. Um, that's one thing. Accountability, I, I told everyone, you must be accountable for your departments and you're accountable to not me but the people. So you must make a report that we can tell the people and they can, and they can see who's performing or not performing. So every time, then I have a one, two, two. I have mm -hmm. a feedback mechanism now, so people oh, okay. can just call. It's like a hotline. Yeah, a hotline. They can complain about any department, and then binabato ko ka sa department. Respond, respond as fast as you can, and tell me how you responded. And there's a um, reporting period in the execom. They mm -hmm. have to report what they've done, how many have reported have responded, not responded, etc. May validator na ako, tsaka meron akong kulela. Oh my God. Yeah, so nobody wants so, to be kulela. So, ano yun, inilalabas right? mo ba yun? Yeah. Mayora, hindi yata nila nakikita. In the Exocom, I yun. say, okay, well, not to the people, but the people are free to see it because okay. the Exocom is open. I just say, okay, eto, ito yung mga departments na um, nag-respond din na mabilis, eto yung walang response, but Yung mga walang response doesn't mean that they're lazy. Baka their, their mechanisms mahina rin. Walang computers, wala silang telepono or what. I ask them naman to explain. But then they can get um, equipment to improve their services. But I'm very big on feedback. Okay? I want to get feedback from the people. I'm very big on people participation. Mm -hmm. Now, we have more than 1,600, I think, accredited NGOs and POs that are part of governance. Actually, that's, that's all good, Mayora, because that becomes all the more inclusive because you include everybody diba, in, in your process of good governance. Yeah. Ay, yung mga penalties naman o yung parusa Eto. sa mga pasaya, pasaway. Pero teka muna, Mayora, don't answer that okay. yet. They will know what your answer is after this break. Stay with us. Welcome back to the hot seat. And our guest for tonight is still the Quezon City Mayor, Joy Belmonte. So, Mayor Joy, ano ba ang iyong parusa sa mga pasaway? Well, una sa lahat, dati kasi napansin ko na kapag gumawa ka ng hindi maganda, parang ikaw pa yung nare-reward kasi you get away with Oo, it. Nga. Tapos yung mga masipag, honest, nagtatrabaho, wala naman silang nakukuha. Nade-demoralize sila. Nade-demoralize oh. sila. So now, I'm trying to consult with the civil service if there's a way na pwede tayo magbigay ng mga bonuses or additional incentives dun sa mga alam naman nating hardworking, honest, and efficient public servants. Mm -hmm. no? But at the end, but the, on the other side of the coin, I also encourage um, everyone na kung may experience kayo na hindi maganda with anybody, magsumbong kayo. Get the name, kasi ngayon yung ID ko, ang laki na ng pangalan. <laughs> yung oh. nire-require ko yon. Uh -huh. Get the names at magsumbong kayo through our hotline. And what will you do? And, syempre, we have to investigate. Mm -hmm. no? But, i-investigahan ko talaga sila. I, I will make sure that they eh, are paano investigated. paano kung nakita mo na talagang sila yung, ano, sila yung uh, may sala? Eh, I think that we should not be afraid to do the right thing. In fact, may mga fixers na nga kaming nakasuhan, actually. Ah, so kinakasuhan uh, nyo talaga sila? Yes. And, all the way. and you know, it goes both ways, by the way, Kim Ha. There are also those from the private sector na they're also the ones that are bribing then the, gov the government that's, employees. That's true, that's true. And we also want to show that hindi rin natin papayagat na gano'n ang mangyayari. So it's both ways. In Singapore, it's both ways. And I think in the Philippines, it should, it should be. be. It should it be should, It should ways. be the same. Mm -hmm. Okay, so sa dami ng ginagawa mo, Mayora Joy, do you still have time for your family? You have a son, right? Yes. So tell, tell me a little bit about <laughs> what's left of your time uh, that you spend with your family. Well, How do you balance it? Well, first, um, I also have a very busy husband 
husband, by the way. Mm -hmm. So he works in um, Lazada. He's okay. uh, in the private sector, which is good because yes. I love the idea that I'm in the public service, but he is in the private. No? Yes. Um, and and so we have more things to talk about, and I learn more things from him. Um, and then my son, he's only one, mm -hmm. and I'm glad that I only have one because it's hard if you have more. Mm -hmm. uh, but he's, he's uh, how, how he's old is 10, he? He's ten. And you know, I I think God, I I love the way that. God knows siguro the people that he should help more. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because no. my son, he doesn't have that much time with his mother or his father, yes. but he is an A student. Mm -hmm. And wow. um, he's a voracious reader. And he never gives us any problems. He studies very hard and... Um, He's he's and very he, mature for he, his age, and he understands, uh, Mayor, that uh, you're not you're not gonna be able to be there for him and all the time, does. like the usual moms. Because when you look at um, yung classmates, na siguro nakikita niya yung mga mami na, di ba? Especially those what you call helicopter moms, di ba? <laughs> helicopter moms. Oh, those that hover around their kids Ay, all oh, the time. Kita mo hindi mo alam niya, di ba? Di ba? <laughs> oh, oh, so that's that's the term that they use. Yeah, diba? he's very mature in the sense that he understands my work, and I show him naman. I show him that the things that I've done for the day, I share mm -hmm. with him. And then um, sometimes when I come out on TV, I tell him to watch. Oh, there's mommy. Mommy's there. Mommy's working. Ganyan. So he understands what I'm doing. So don't you feel guilty sometimes that uh, you are not able to give him enough time or you are able to um, work things out so that, you know, you he doesn't feel or you don't feel sometimes guilty as a mom? It's not guilt kasi kere, because I think that everything is cultural. That's mm -hmm. what I learned in school because I'm an archaeologist. That, yes. and, and it's culture that tells you that a mother must spend all her time with her son yes. and be hands-on, etc. Yes. But really, every culture is different. And it's about raising your child um, in a certain way such that he gets accustomed that this is our culture in our family. And the thing is, it helped that my mother was just as hardworking as me because she was a journalist. Yes, and I, that's true. Yes. I, I, I knew her. Yeah, yes. I, I worked with her before. With her before. Yes. And you know that her work as a journalist is just as hard as my work now as a politician. And my father was a politician. So yes. I hardly saw my family, and yet I turned out okay because even kung bata ka, medyo matampuhin ka kasi you compare them to your other your friends' parents. When you grow older, you realize, oh wow, my mother did so much for the country as a journalist. She did this. Oh, my father as a public servant, he did this, That's and right. you feel a little bit of pride that you oh, have parents like that. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and then hopefully in the next generations to come, yes. that's all that you're gonna see also, di ba? Yes, I hope so, my son will grow up like that also. Oh, nga. Mm -hmm. Pero hindi mo siya ipupo siya politika? No, no. And I think, he, I think he's not interested. Ah, he's not interested. Yeah. Okay. So, future plans, uh, Mayora. So, people are saying now that you are obviously you're now there you might tend to follow in your father's footsteps what's next for you me well i have no i don't want to look into the future because why not because i think that i'm here for the here and now mm -hmm. i have to think about owning now that this is what i want to do now and mm -hmm. then whatever now brings you uh, or the consequences of your doing your work well, mm -hmm. it that's such a kind of But mm -hmm. the important thing is to do your work well now because this opportunity is once in a lifetime. And it should not be like a stepping stone to something else that you want to do. It's already there. And this is already the future God gave you. Um, and so make the most of it. You know, that's true. All, all I'm saying is that since nakita mo na this seems to be your calling, you have the passion for uh, public service, hindi ba? So, kung nakita mo na yan, Maybe God is telling you this uh, this path, di ba? The, or where to go, hindi ba? So, yun ang ibig ko sabihin, Mayora. Kasi minsan, kahit ayaw natin, dun tayo napupunta eh, di ba? Mm -hmm. So, um, but of course, you have your own goals, you have your own plan. So, do you see yourself, um, kung ikaw masusunod, do you see yourself uh, still in public service so many years down the road? Five years, ten years down the road? Well, yeah, okay, how funny, but I never look at it from my perspective that I that see way. myself in this way or that way. I'm looking at it from how my people will be in Quezon City after five years, three years, nine years. Yes. This is the situation I want to see them in. It's more of and my dream And if you don't see that, yeah. what the, the situation that you want to see them in, that means that you will stay so that uh, you will accomplish that goal. Hanggang makita mo kung anong gusto 
mo para sa kanila. Para Parang gusto yan? ko yung mga gusto kong uh, ambition ko para sa kanila. Yun yung gusto kong makita. Tapos, um, eh kung hindi mo makita, Mayora, so you will stay there hanggang makita mo. Well, of course, because we only have nine years maximum. <laughs> and we don't even know if the people will like us, diba? yes. because now we're not mm -hmm. that traditional in our right, approach. Right. But we're hoping at least that um, somehow they will appreciate what we're doing. It, it might be a little bit different from what they're used to, but nonetheless, their lives will be better. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, kahit na iba yung pamamaraan, basta yung end, ay maramdaman pa rin nila nakasama sila sa pag-unlad, which is my motto. Um, sana, at least nine years, ibigay nila sa akin para yung, yung, yung ambition ko pa sa, para sa kanila na sana at least ilang libo rin na mabigyan natin ng pamahay, uh, magkaroon tayo ng magandang pamantasan. That's one Ayan, of my yung, dreams. Yan ba ang legacy na gusto mong iiwan sa mga tao ng Quezon City? Yes, I'd like to have a, uh, a university that's mm -hmm. kind of well-known or with the high standards. I'd like to be a leading city, not just in the Philippines, but in the global community. Mm -hmm. And that's why I also like to focus on global issues like climate change, for example. Yeah, how do you deal with that, uh, Mayor? Kasi... Hindi naman lahat nakakaintindi what climate change is, eh, di ba? Yeah, actually, of course, the people don't understand it that yes. much and they don't uh, see how important it is. But you know that it's important and you know that mm -hmm. it has an effect on their lives. And um, sometimes, it's up to you to, to educate them as well. No? Mm -hmm. And, and um, yung mga ganyan, tingin ko, okay, hindi nila masyadong naintindihan or it's not their priority. But because the global community puts a premium on it and, and you're a member of the global community and you know that the world is affected uh, by the little things that all of us do, even in our own cities, mm -hmm. we have a moral responsibility to do the right thing also. Yun, paano mo yan ini-impart sa taong bayan? Especially those uh, in the Quezon City. Kasi tayo, we can talk about that and we will understand each yes. other. Pero it does not normally translate that easy when you talk to the regular residents. For example, yung pagtatapan ng basura, hindi ba? On how you clean your own backyard, di ba? And, uh, uh, all these things add up, hindi ba? Pero magugulat ka rin, Kim, because they do understand. Like, for example, nung nagkaroon ng undoy, and then ang daming basura nag-wash up, mm. di ba? Uh, when nag-wash up yung basura, nakita nila na, oh, hindi, pala hindi dapat tinatapon yung basura sa mga estero. And then, uh, then, uh, then right after that, we passed the ordinance regulating plastic. Yes. You know what? That was very well accepted. It was. Oo, yung mga tao, gusto nila yun. So, at least naintindihan nila na masama sa kalikasan at sa kanilang mga buhay ang plastic. Kasi bumabaha, no? Oh, speaking of which, di ba? We had this uh, heavy rains recently brought mm -hmm. about by this typhoon. Yeah. Pisa, di ba? So how did um, Quezon City, did Quezon City suffer? Nagkaroon ba ng flooding sa inyo? Or was it uh, much better much managed? Much better, I think. Yeah. Um, well, you can't avoid that there would be a little bit of flooding. Mabilis siya nagsubside. Which means effective yung mga... I think, kasi you know, I've been... This is so not sexy, but um, because people like to feature all these fa sexy things that mayors do. But I do the clog regularly. Mm -hmm. uh, rain, rain or shine, uh, wet season or dry season, we're just declogging and declogging our esteros. Yes. And then our, our we are dredging and dredging our waterways, mm -hmm. you know, year round, just to make sure that when the floods come or the rains come, we are prepared. Okay. Know? So final question, yeah. Mayor. So, uh, sila kasi, nasanay sila na lagi nilang nakikita yung kanilang mayor umiikot eh. So, ang tanong ng mga Quezon City residents, will they see more of you? Well, they, they already see me. Um, a lot. They've seen me a lot in the past because I really make it as vice mayor. As vice mayor. And then when I became mayor, I told the people, and they know this. I told them through Facebook and every interview that I have that give me six months um, mm -hmm. to just do good housekeeping because I'm inheriting. Oh, tap pa tapos na yung six months. Ba? Yeah, that's why. So uh, tapos na nga. Kaya so by December tapos na yon. Oh yes. And I told them, give me that six months. But remember that I I inherited the hostile government that was not in supporting me. Nako, so, hindi ko na itanong yan kaysa yung kanina. Ah, kasi <laughs> hostile, di ba? Anyway, oh, so, anyway. So that's another episode naman. Ay, ina, bakit ko kasi yun. So, iba siya. So, I had to, um, you know, I, there are many things I had to relearn and learn. No? It's not like pinasa lang sa'yo tapos continuity eh. Maraming pagbabago na kailangan isagawa. And I asked the people, give me this time and after that, next year, pag medyo settled na ako, you will see me all the time. You know? And that was my promise to them and I intend to keep it. 
Okay, wonderful. So thank you, uh, thank you very much, uh, Mayor Joy Belmonte, for being with us today thank here. Thank you, Kim. And uh, we hope to see you again soon. Thank you, and I hope uh, to see you again very soon too. Of course. Marami pa tayo pag-uusapan. Oo, uh -huh. madami pa talaga. Marami kang sinabi, pero ngayon lang. So, maraming salamat po. <laughs> sa uulitin si Mayor Joy Belmonte ng Quezon City. At dito po nagtatapos ang ating episode ng Hot Seat. Magbabalik po kami next week. At ako po ang inyong lingkod, si Kim Bernardo Lokit.